What's going on, bros and broets? Look, man, this is Wood Junior and Ross the Cross. <laughs> Ross the Cross, man. Hey, look, we trust all as well, man. Yes, we are here, man, in Adamac, uh, Harley Davidson, here in Jackson, via Florida, Bay Meadows, man. I'm getting my thirty thousand mile service done. My guy Ross the Cross is getting his uh, nine thousand mile service done, and man, got my guy Chris here, man. He's gonna uh, tell you guys what a 30,000 mile consists of. You haven't been taking care of my bike ever since I've been coming here, right? Oh yeah. Man. Oh, when you first bought it. Yes, yes. And now I'm at the 30,000 mile mark. So what does that consist of, Chris? So the 30K is basically, we're actually doing front and rear tires because that's where you're at with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's the three fluid change. We, get, we do oil, transmission, primary. And then we also, it's time to change the spark plugs according to the service manual. So that's a little bit more labor intensive uh, than the original twin cams okay. for the Milwaukee Aids because now we have to pull the fuel tank to be able to get to your spark plugs. Oh wow. Oh wait, so there's four spark plugs Correct. versus two? Correct, yeah. So there's only oh. there's four on the on the Milwaukee Aids and then two on a regular twin cam motor. Okay. Wow, good to know. So basically we got the spark plugs here. There you have one here, one here, and then you have one on the other side of the motor. Okay. Uh, and that's the reason why I have to pull the tank off is because I can't get to these two here. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I have seen like some people would try to do it with the tank on. Is that yeah. possible or? I mean, you can lift it up, but why? It's four bolts and a couple wires in the tank. I mean, this gotcha. all, all that mounts the tank. Yeah. The bike is this. Uh oh. Right here, oh, really? So, uh, okay. Like four bolts, so there's no reason. Oh my gosh, wait, is this one of the ones? That's one of the old ones, yeah. Look at this, y'all. Oh my gosh, look at that, bro. Let's see if it's running good or not. It's running good. Oh, yeah. How you know? Got the color. Hand color. Is it for real? For real. Yeah, there's, if, if you buy a service manual, there's a little diagram in there. Like color. What? Look at that rust, though. I can't believe it still works, man. Uh, well, it's on, the out, it's on the outside part. Okay. So the big thing is that goes into the cell inside the cylinder. So as long as that's still kicking. Right. Okay. So basically what they got is they have the a, cylinders run again. They huh. got a, those are all new ones over there. So they got the special tool, which it helps pull the okay. boots sit down in here. Uh-huh. We use tool, grab the boot. That way you don't you're not ripping on the wires. Oh, what um, is that called again? This is a special like Look boot holder that, that we have. You already yeah. have before? Yeah. Okay. And then they even use them on cars. <laughs> exactly. The headers, exactly. No. The headers especially. Yep. <laughs> so you you know before you pull the plugs out, you want to make sure you blow all any debris. Because if you look down in here, the uh, white. So you see down in there. Wow. So you want to make sure all that's kind of sprayed out with a, with uh, with air. Oh, Are they going the motor or somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Because it goes right into this. That's right above the top of the piston. Okay. Gotcha. Where those are at. Okay. So basically, you have you know you, you got your extension. I had it kind of set up for you. Go ahead and pull it out. So, what size is that? This is a 5 8 okay. socket. This is a standard. Wow. So, so then we can... have, so we have a, um, it's basically like a filler gauge for the, for the spark plugs. Now, okay. 30,000. So, the spec for a brand new plug is uh, 31,000, 35,000. Okay. For the for Milwaukee 8. Now, it's different for every motor. Okay. So, not Milwaukee 8, but all the Milwaukee 8s are the same, but like, you know, if your twin cam has a different one. Gotcha. It's 3540, so there's a little bit, you know, the difference between the motors, you just to make sure that you look at your service manuals to find out what the gapping is. What? Some of them have them on the, like the Screaming Eagle ones will have the gap on the box because it might be different than what uh, uh, the uh, other ones are. So if they're incorrectly set, what'll happen like? So basically what I'm getting ready to show you, so this is one that's war, it should be 35 thousandths. 
We're about 42 thousandths. Wow. It okay. should stop over here like these. So if we go right here and pull this one back, it should stop right there at 35. Okay. That means so does that mean it's wore out? So what happens is the electro wears out because it's, it's arcing all the time. Okay. So when that gap gets a little bit bigger, your coil has to send a harder thing. It's harder for it to bridge that gap. You don't get as clean a burn. You don't get as efficient of a burn. You'll get to a point where that gap gets so large that it won't even be able to arc That's anymore. Fine. Really? Yep. Gotcha. So the, something that we do see sometimes is this is this is actually a glass piece right here that the electrode sits in. Okay. Uh, sometimes when you get some runnability issues, well, we've actually seen this glass is cracked and it'll arc out the side of it instead of arcing what? across here and that gives you some runnability problems. Oh, wow. So how can you tell if it's a, um, I wouldn't say a bad spark plug, but a bad engine, like with this, this is a spark plug, a telltale sound? Uh, not always. Sometimes uh, if you got a bad engine, sometimes this will be physically damaged. Okay. Where a piston has slapped into it. Uh, gotcha. um, we've had other ones where they're pitch black or they're covered with oil. Okay. So if it's covered with oil, you have oil getting past your rings, so it's definitely a chance. You know, you need to probably Ooh. get that top end off and get the, get the rings redone on wow. your pistons. Makes sense. You're getting a lot of carryover. So we always put anti-seize on the new ones going in, mm -hmm. so because we have dissimilar metals, yeah. and it'll galvanize so and corrode. So like these will have a little bit harder time pulling out. Gotcha. These ones won't. Okay. Well, I gotta pull these ones out at 60k. They'll come. They'll glide right out. So I'll be here probably the next three months. I have 60 <laughs> Exactly right, exactly right. So then when you put this bar plug boots on, just something that we've run into, you always use electrical contact grease. Okay. So, and the big reason why you'll put it in here and it helps slide it down oh, over the spark plug. Gotcha, okay. So those plugs, so basically the plug sits like this. You see how it's kind of hard? Uh-huh. When I put this contact grease in there, it helps it slide in and click in easier because if you don't click it in right, it creates runnability problems. Same thing, um, because it needs to click into that electrode in there. Makes sense. Help arc. Now, one of the big things that we sell uh, is make sure you use the Harley plugs. Okay. So when you use like a, uh, and even even though Champion makes the plugs, mm -hmm. they have twist tops. Oh. So this piece right here will twist off. Now what'll happen is we've had customers where they might quit running on them. And this, because of the vibration, has completely unscrewed itself. Wow. So because this piece will separate on the Harley ones, it's made into the plug. You can't you can't separate that. Awesome. Okay. So but with any aftermarket plug, they all screw on. And we've had times where guys have come in with the bike's not running correctly and it's literally because this has unscrewed itself. Is it a port number for that? For my bike? Mm. I'm sure uh comments may ask like for yep, a port right. number. So our port number is it's uh three one six triple zero one two. There you go guys. And uh, Chris, someone mentioned in the comments, they said that uh, once I get the spark plugs, I can possibly potentially get a little more horsepower. Is that true? You're, it's just going to be more efficient. Okay. You won't gotcha. really get, you won't get more spark, you know, there's a lot of, you know, stuff that you can put in your head. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's, you know, we're, you know, I'll run triple platinums and my male bike feels snappier. Uh, a lot of times that's in your head. It's just like wherever you hear noise, that might be a normal noise, but then you're like, man, my bike's blowing up. So you get what I'm saying? It's all some of the stuff that happens wow. kind of in our heads. Kind of in the heads. But having, my having fresh plugs, it is going to run efficient. It's going right. to run a little smoother. Awesome. So it might actually feel like it gained the horsepower. You know, it might feel like it gained it, uh, but, it's just more, but it's just more crisp. Oh, better yeah. mileage too? Yeah, because you're going to be jumping further apart. It's right. easier for the pull to work. Yeah. Because see, in my mind, we're doing a stage two right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when they should the cross was feeling his back tire he felt his back tire like was it wobble a little bit or it felt like it when the light came on first before i felt it wow <gasps> oh my gosh you're right look at this man look at there dude Ross the cross got a nail and this is a new tire that probably was on the way up here then or down the way down here i should say the rest is, back. is that what that says oh the light came on oh when i slowed down <laughs> yeah, they get, they get real squirrely when you start this air pressure. <laughs> yep, you're right, like a, like a, a wobble right, or something? Right. Okay. Ooh, yes, wee. That, uh, what is it, Dunloop or Dunlop? It's a Dunlop. Yeah. Dunlop. Yeah, yeah, I like those. those. To me, those are the best tires, man. Yeah. Yes! Bro, check it out, man. My guy, Ross the Cross, has that uh, extended service plan warranty, man. Cause y'all just saw the nail in this tire, so they're gonna take care of it for him. Got the new tire for him, ready to rock and roll, man. 
You glad you got the service plan? Man, see God, it's good, man. So man, look, if y'all haven't got that discount ESP plan, man, definitely get it, man. He showing Chris like the reason that I needed a tire because a lot of people think, oh man, I don't see any wires, so it's a good tire. But there are yeah. certain telltale signs, right? So one of the biggest ones is there's no tread to here in the center. Uh -huh. We want to look here. We have a brand new tire. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot of meat comparatively. Oh. Wear rings on. So on. I don't know if this one has it or not. I don't see that. that there? No. So right here there is a wear rim. Okay. But that's 230 seconds. The manufacturer recommends at three. Okay. Uh, to get them replaced. My big thing is you have two tires. <laughs> yeah. You know you only have two points that's of contact. You know you're getting a little bit of rain. You know, you're not going to get a lot of traction with that tire. Wow, look at this. So where is that? What do you call that again? The tread. The oh, no. <laughs> that little puncture thing? Or? So there's a wear rib right here. Wear rib, yeah. Is there, did, have, have I worn that out here? Yes, there's no wear rib in there. <laughs> you were beyond the 230 seconds, which is uh, well below the manufacturer's. Oh, really? Because Ooh. this is kind of, it's kind of right there where you can see where it's more through the wear. Yeah. So you're not, this tire is not too much further from seeing from seeing those those things. Now the other thing that happens, oh wow, when the tire gets like this and gets worn, it's a lot easier for things to penetrate it. Oh, so if you don't pick up a nail or pick up something that you might not have picked up with this, yeah, or say if it was a small one, the tread's sticking up on this tire to where maybe it doesn't go all the way through the tire. Gotcha. You know, whereas on this one, it's gonna go all the way through. Man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I was going to wait till I come back from the Key West trip, but uh, my guy Papa D was like, yeah, man, not. you should go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, if someone comes in with a bad enough tire, we will refuse to ride. Oh, that makes sense. That's because good. Because at my point in time, I'm not in danger of my life. If you want yeah. to endanger your life, that's fine, but I'm not going to mm -hmm. do mine. You know, I got a kid at home, so. Because there are some people, Chris, that will ride, what, to like, they see like wire, but it's not like exposed, exposed. So they're like, so it's okay. the reinforcement. It's the reinforcement. There's different uh, layers okay. of the tread, and that wire mesh is a reinforcement for the tire. Wow, you were well beyond anywhere you needed <laughs> to be at that point in time. That's the sensor. I didn't even know it was battery yeah, they turn off, And they turn off if you step for a period of time, they completely shut off. Oh, that's my thing. Okay, I thought it was like, oh, like it's only on in motion. No, once you uh, on motion after three miles per hour, it looks the sensor oh, off. Oh, gotcha. Okay, makes so you sense. You gotta get some revolutions on there. Um, <laughs> like this is a standard rubber one. Okay, oh wow. So, you can see the difference. You know, they went with the 90 degree, so it's easier for you guys to put air in them. I love that 90 degree, man. A lot that of people hated these styles, it's a lot harder to get to. They yes. burn in their hand, you know, bike's hot, burning your hand on the rotor. <laughs> Make you want to sell your bike? Well, not sell you. <laughs> so right here, basically, there's a rubber cushion that sits in here, and then that's where the pulley sits in it. And that rubber with the with the pulley, uh -huh. that's why it's called a cush drive. Cush drive, okay. So instead of it being bolted, instead of uh, the rear pulley being bolted to the actual hub, uh -huh. there's a rubber piece in here and then the pulley sits in that rubber and it cushions it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that 90 degree angle, man. No, for sure, it makes everything easier. Man, they got like seven or 10 of them on it. <laughs> yeah, well, when you see them in the factory, there's a lot more on them, but okay. it's also, it, Every weight, <coughs> every weight's dependent. Like this is five grams. Okay. This is smaller, but it's seven grams. Okay. So you know each, and that's what the Harley ones looks like. It's got a bunch of weight on it, but they're lighter weights. Okay. So that's the one thing you don't always have to be nervous about them. Um, we're not supposed to put more than three and a half ounces on a wheel. Okay. So if we spin this around, so say if I spin this around and it says four ounces. Then what I'll do is I'll swap that balance dot over oh, to the 180 and then re-go it. And if it's still over four and a half, then I turn the tire back into in part so we go we grab and get a different one. Okay. And no warranty out of the tire for failure to balance. Wow. But that's a perk of being at the, you know, a big Harley store too, is we have the ability to just swap that out. 
That's what I'm talking about. Just like that. Versus waiting on something, you know? Because that'll tell you the weight of that number that comes out. Okay. So 60 grams or 2.25 ounces, which is well within the round. Okay. It's real typical with our wheels. Gotcha. So what we'll do is we'll go four. These are ounces. Okay. They're ounces and grams on wow. both sides. Okay. They don't have any black ones? No. <laughs> I got black ones. No, I think I did. Hold on, let me see if I got one. <laughs> I made mean, we did, but we were out. No, if it's not, that's you know that's fine, man. <laughs> you might get lucky. We had them. We actually looked out. Oh no, I think I got spiked up low. I didn't even think they were color coded. I was just like, okay, they're standard. No, uh, there are some. So what we'll do is now, because we're going back to a different style, we're going back to that. Oh, wow, so that matters too, wow. So we go, well, these are done in grams. Okay. Where these are grams and ounces. Makes sense, gotcha. Okay. So we got 60, 60. Uh, flashes, so that's where I know I need to I need to put my weight there. So we have to figure out. Sometimes we run into issues to where these land. Yeah. You know, it'll be like, oh, I want it here, so we'll have to go on either side of that and put the weight. All right, what nation bros and bros? So man, thank God, man, my guy Chris is getting me right, and not only is he getting me right, my guy Ross the Cross is right on his tire. Check my guy Ross the Cross on you. Yes, sir. Man, this is meaty, bro. Nice. Oh, there it is. See there, guys? This rushed the cross tire that has nail in it. And look at there, still good tread. Now, Ross, where's that point at? Let's see where you can find that point. Because you still have fairly new tire. Right there. That oh. long ways to go yet. Wait a minute, where is it now? Right there. See the step right there? Uh huh. Comes up right there. Feel your finger on there. It kind of goes up and down. Feel the finger now? Oh, yeah. So when that flattens out, that means you when need this, it? When this part gets to level to there, it's time uh -huh. to replace the tire. It would okay. be better to do it before then. Show you guys the tire in the front. Ooh, delicious. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, we ready for Key West. I can't be around bad habits. Bad Talk like, yeah. what's up, my guy? Hey, 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 Trey. He, hey, see? He me. He I told you. He to, he oh, no. Uh oh, let me wipe oh, this off. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I, told I know y'all don't laugh, but I just hit 30,000, man. So I'm giving my 30,000 oh, yeah. miles. Yeah. Uh, 2020. Up, man? Come on, help me out. What, give me, give me what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I know, man. Yeah, Come on, help me out, man. It's 30,000 miles. I give him, I give him 13. I just put it on up. <laughs> <laughs> I got that in June. Really? I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Hey, it, it, it's hard, man. This is the president, man, of Reverie Chapter here in Jacksonville. And that's Trey 3000, yeah, man. man. Right there, man. You, you got a great group out here, man. Thanks, man. You got Thanks, a great group. Man. Wait a minute, so he's part of your group, too? Yeah, that's the secretary, man. This guy, man, he get more miles than all of us, and he the, he the oldest. He what? The most, yeah, he's our problem child. <laughs> <laughs> 72 years old, man. Just got back from Alaska. Then he, last year, he just did the uh, all-chapter run. Oh, man. All-chapter run, all-quarter states, all four corners, all in one. 
Man, that's such a yeah. blessing, man. 72 years old doing that, man. So he sets the bar high for us. So yeah, yeah. We, we, can't, we can't come with excuses, man. <laughs> a guy like that doing that, man. Hey, now, Bree, don't make too many excuses. No, I know y'all no. get on the road and hit it, man. Yes, sir. Wow, such a blessing, man. You breathe too? Yes, sir. What's going on? My bad, my apologies. How you doing? I'm good, man. I don't think I met you on oh, oh, Fast Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Ooh, hey, this, hey, y'all, this is Fast Eddie right there. <laughs> now, I, I, can, can I ask what the names on them? Yeah. Okay, so why do they call you Fast Eddie? I'm not fast. <laughs> <laughs> Now, guys, I, I told y'all. Like no, man, it's shine like it's on No, look at the president move. I ain't even do nothing. Oh, my God. I told y'all, see, when I step out, I got to keep my boots clean, man. Man, example, man. man. Ooh, wait, you leave. The president is leaving, <laughs> man. All right, well, Nation, Trey 3000 is going to go ahead and give us the meaning of the name. Oh, yeah, just uh, like Andre 3000 from Georgia. I'm Georgia boy, too, so instead of Andre 3000, it's Trey 3000. There it is. Hey, Top Flight, did somebody say they want to ride with you? What you going to ask them? Oh. Uh, they ain't breathe or what? Oh no, no, they ain't breathe. Let's just say, like, if I say, hey, uh, top play, can I ride with y'all, man? Well, you say, can you ride with me? I'm gonna say, yeah, you can ride with me, but I need three fill ups from you. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. So, Fast Eddie, three fill ups, man. Yeah, man, no problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, pray. Can I get three fill ups? Three fill ups? Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 See what I'm saying? Hey, I even got my water. You got Let's go. Water. So you already knew. Let's go. I never knew what that meant, y'all. Three fill-ups, man. To the Because if you ride with me and you can't give me three fill-ups, we ain't went nowhere. Wow, that's true. What we doing? Riding around the city? <laughs> You can't ride with top flight. Somebody, you can't give him but but a gas. No, you can't. Hey, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you three Phillips, bro. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna hold you to I'm, that. I'm gonna give you three. Come on, hey. But you, no, 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 no. See, you said somebody else. You can't give me three Phillips. Why? You been shocking up with us too long. <laughs> you been shocking up with Bree too long. So you can't. Wood Nation can't give top flight three Phillips. <laughs> Come on, man! Did I? Am I on camera when I said that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Wood Nation can't give up, can't give top flight three fill ups. Wood Nation want to give top flight three fill ups, so, man. I need eight fill ups from uh from. Woo! Wood Put in the eight. comments below, man. I need Should eight. I give top flight rare breed eight fill ups? I need eight fill ups, baby. Oh well, you gotta break it down what that mean. Cause some people like what I that need mean. Eight full tanks of gas. Woo! One way. Oh man, one way. Nah. <laughs> <laughs>
man two huge thumbs up once again man to hondo uh from uh rare breed when i was in south carolina man he the uh, one he's the one that hit me on this app here check this out guys so you see there it says 236 and the time is currently well of course 236 look at all of that now we're here where the little beacon is there see that so once i hit once i hit play here look at that uh oh hang on check that out uh oh so round about look at there so 3 30 3 30 here all right we're going to start to really get it but if we can get it hastily but safely i think we'll be good so let's see around four oh look at that bros and bros 4 15 man and look we're just going to be submerged in rain bros and bros oh my gosh uh, so they're done with my bike now this is ross the cross bike there all right Appreciate you, bro. Don't worry, dude. Right on, man. Ah. Hey, man.
Wood Nation bros and bros. Look, man, riding in that rain is Can no joke. Oh my gosh, just no joke. We're here at uh, Southern Soul Barbecue, man. For those who follow the channel, you guys know me and my guy Ross the Cross love Southern Soul Barbecue, man. So when we like to stretch the bikes out, we come here. And y'all know uh, when we're in the uh, city areas, you know what I'm saying, we go to uh, Dickie's Barbecue. Man, here's the fleet bros and broettes. Man, the rain gear did good for the most part, thank God. Ross the Cross said uh, his rain gear did pretty good too for the most part. This is his um, rain gear he had for a while, so. He got one more Ruha out of it. So Ross, what you gonna do with this rain gear now that you already used it? <laughs> Ross got his new rain gear. Now, hey Ross, I, in, any tip you wanna give man riding in that thick rain like that? I mean, that's some heavy rain we just rolled in, man. what you think, for real? Slow down. Yep, yep. Slow down and keep right on the road. That is, that yeah, is you true. You got a few tires, go a little bit extra. Woo, yeah. So they're breaking me in about 500 miles. Yes, that is so true, man, because, man, y'all, we, we were like, I wouldn't say we were getting it, but we was trying to stay ahead of traffic, though, you know what I mean? So, like, if you ride in the rain, bros and bro, it's, man, I'm telling you, just, like Ross Cross said, man, in conjunction to that, just be careful, be smart, and be vigilant, man, you know? And I can ride, and Ross can ride in the rain, like heavy rain, but always have that limit to be like, okay, you know what? This is just too much for me and pull off to the side of the road. There is no shame in pulling off to the side of the road. Uh, me and Ross Cross, we just decided to keep going. Uh, but more than likely, sometimes like if I'm in unfamiliar territory versus me pulling off to, to the side of the road, what I would do, I'll get in the uh, far right lane until there's an opening, until the rain is slacked up. Then I'll go uh, back to the far left lane. Um, I don't think I ever pull to the side of the road, honestly, but that's not to say that I won't, you know what I'm saying? But at the same, no, I think, uh, I think we did. When we were in uh, North Carolina, man, that rain was just treacherous, man. So two thumbs up to Papa D, man, pulled everybody off to the side of the road. Well, not to the side of the road, but to a gas station. And uh, man, you know, we were just able to regroup and uh, take it on back to the hotel. Real talk, riding in the rain is no joke. You have to be vigilant. Make sure you have good rain gear. I, for the most part, I was comfortable. The only thing that got wet, man, is my left foot. And I don't know how, because I'm fully prepared. I got my rain gear on, etc. My right foot, dry. It's pretty good. But I was good for the most part, man, because I had my rain gear, I had my full face helmet. Um, Ross said he had a bit of an issue because he, Ross is rocking his half helmet. And with his half helmet, he have his drop down shades that you, you know, that the uh, helmets have. Uh, let me show you. I think, uh, well, y'all know the drop down shades that come from your helmet. He had those on and he had limited visibility. So, you know what I'm saying? What I look like trying to punch it in the rain. So you just have to be careful, but you have to stay consistent. Man, I'm telling you what I, what I do personally is I focus on the vehicle in front of me. And as soon as I see that vehicle brake lights uh, light up, then I'll slow down. You know what I'm saying? Now, when they get over, then that far left lane is mine. I don't go any faster, but I do make sure, you know what I'm saying, I'm riding enough just to get away from traffic because I'm, a, I'm just going to share this with you, bros and bros. The way I do, I like to be ahead of traffic or behind traffic. Man, do not, please do not ride with the flow of traffic. Either be in front of traffic or be behind traffic. You like that? Thank you, bro. Appreciate have, it, man. I have a street pop. Oh, do you? Yeah, that's very nice. Oh, nice. Appreciate you, my guy. Well, uh, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Ride in front of traffic or ride behind traffic, man. You know what I'm saying? Please do not ride on the side of traffic. It is not fun. It is not good. But, yeah, man, um, I would suggest that. And uh, I would also suggest, now, hear me out on this. When you're riding, uh, whether in the rain or, you know what I'm saying, sunshine, there are times where you have to, I'm not gonna say be aggressive in your riding. Uh, I would definitely say though, there are times you have to command presence on the road, all right? Because, you know, and drivers, I'm gonna tell you, man, drivers can tell if you're timid on your motorcycle or not. Because as soon as they sense that you're timid, you know what I'm saying? They're just gonna like hop in front of you. They're gonna 
the truck drivers are going to, you know, not all, I mean, because I know we got some truck drivers out there, but not all, but some are just going to, you know what I'm saying, either say, hey, speed up and get out of the way. I'm just going to get over and force you to speed up or slow down. So you have to, well, me anyway, I like to command a certain presence when I'm on the road, when it's raining, when the sun is shining, etc., because I want them to see me and know that I'm there. Yes, loud pipe saves lives, but that's only to a certain degree. I also believe it's how you ride and the way you ride. So me personally, me personally, <laughs> gosh, me personally, I like to command presence, all right? So like I said, what that means is um, if I'm solo riding, I like to ride not so much as in the center of the lane, but if I'm in the far left lane, I like to ride on the right side of that same lane so riders can see me. If I'm in the center lane, I like to ride right in the center, all right? Now, I know that's not the best way all the time because there's like you know stuff in the center of the road from cars or oil or whatever the case may be but i just like to command presence because if a driver sense that you timid and what i mean by that if they sense that you're uh you know squiggly and wanting to turn or, or get in the left lane squiggly and wanting to get in the right lane squiggly and wanting to merge they're just going to hit the gas and just jump in front of you you see what i'm saying and it's not that they're meaning to bogard you or run you off the road they're just like hey man take control of it or i'm just gonna hop in front of you so i definitely like to command presence man you know what i mean so other than that we're about to go in here and get some grub man but that rain was no joke man that was no joke please don't be stubborn man and be like i'm gonna ride in all sorts of what alcohol how much it come down man when your visibility becomes limited and you can no longer see in front of you please pull to the side of the road all right to god be the glory that wasn't the case with us the visibility the visibility wasn't crystal clear but i was still able to um guide me and my guy ross across out of that uh um, that heavy rain into smooth roads again so man let's go get some road <laughs> let's go get some road <laughs> let's go get some need. man you doing a lot better man <laughs> damn bro tell him how i used to do man for real like how i used to ride in the rain for real so originally we're a little bit apprehensive about riding the rain slowing yeah. down <laughs> yep uh, not keeping up with the traffic mm -hmm. people about packing up behind you <laughs> yeah I'm no more. <laughs> but how did I get like that though, Rose? Lots of practice. Yes, sir. Right there. Taking it to, to the little by little. Nothing all at once. Just mm -hmm. got behind trucks for the wind. Yep. Yep. Practicing that when the gust comes, because you know the gust we got into, we was already prepared for it. Exactly. And man, I used to be like, why is Rouse doing this to me? He know I don't like being behind trucks. When I was like, uh, you know what I'm saying, like an uh, entry-level rider, this man would have me ride behind trucks, man. I'm like, Rouse, let's pass. And why you say you don't want me to pass it? Because I want you to get used to the side winds. Exactly, exactly. And man, man, now I wouldn't say I master the side winds, but I'm more prepared now, especially when we were on that bridge. Oh my gosh, how that wind was blowing? Yeah. Man, I was just easing into it, man, so. Man, if you have, I know most of y'all like solo riding, but you have, if you have somebody out there, man, like Ross Cross that don't mind riding and getting out there with you, take proper advantage of that, man, so that person can teach you and help you to advance to the next riding level, man. So, appreciate you, my guy. Yeah, so you ride behind a truck, so you're perfectly, relatively safe because the wind's just, a, you know, constant back and mm -hmm. two, back and two. You don't have to worry about something that's side wind coming out of the blue. But you can't see wind. Yes. That prepares you for when you got a big gust. So true. Because you know what I used to do, man? And I'll be honest with you guys. When the wind would blow, and uh, Ross never saw this man in my beginning stage, I would try to wrestle the bike against the wind. I know that's weird. If the wind is blowing to my right, you know what I'm saying? I would try to fight the wind and fight my bike at the same time. Man, I almost had multiple crashes. I'm telling you guys, man. This is why I, I this is why I have this channel, man. So you guys can learn from what I'm putting out there, learn from my pros and cons. Remember, I was wrestling with the bike, man, <laughs> <laughs> and and it would it would be nothing to do with the um, uh, the, um, the fairing. You know how they call it the bat wing fairing, how the wind makes the uh, handlebar shake. It was nothing like that. It was just I was wrestling against the wind versus how do you do? You just gotta glide with the wind and glide with it. Glide with the wind, man. So. There he is, man, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> I got mac and cheese, um, Brunswick stew. Uh, what is this style? Grilled turkey. 
and um, ribs. Ooh, and two slices of bread. <laughs> All right, man, so we about to grub. We have Rosa Bro. so I'm in front of the uh, Savannah Harley Davidson dealership. Why? Because I want to go over a couple of things because we are quickly approaching the uh, Key West truck, man. So two huge thumbs up to those who are going to tag along, man. Much appreciated. Guys, we're going to have a ball. It's going to be epic to God be the glory. And those who could not, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, tell along with us but wanted to, you know what I'm saying, there will be a next time and another time. May not be the Key West, but you know me, man. I always, whenever I set out for an adventure, man, I always make all of you guys aware. And if whoever want to come out, that's who come out. You know what I'm saying? Or it may not even be me. Like this here is actually Big Mike and Powell's event. And uh, man, I just wanted to tag along. You guys wanted to tag along. So I think this is awesome, man. And it's just uh, being pushed by myself, uh, Tiffany Renee and her husband, uh, Papa D. Rods, uh, Kicks and Harley. Uh, man, just just everybody, man. And y'all, by the way, check out those YouTube channels, man. Uh, Barber CVO 19 is supposed to be here. Comment below if you're still coming, bro. I'm telling you, man. You got to comment below. But anywho, man, Barber CVO cool cat, man. Also, man, y'all check out uh, Gliding on Two's YouTube channel, man. Awesome dude. Man, listen, his product reviews are off the chain, man. This guy is honest, professional, superb. Two huge thumbs up, man. Y'all check out uh, Lady uh, Lady Wheel 305 and her husband, Big Wheel. Check out their YouTube channel. Man, just a lot, man. Check out Switching Gears U channel. U channel. <laughs> check out Switching Gears YouTube channel. And uh, check out Southern uh, Throttle. Man, just a lot of awesome YouTubers, man. Check these guys out, man. T Grizzy, um, Ray Moto Life. Check them out, man. Check all these guys out, man. So if you're going to be a part of the Key West trip that is going to be next week, uh, next Friday to be exact. Key West, Key West. <laughs> Kickstands will be up. Kickstands up this Friday, uh, five in the morning, and that's going to be September 16th. So I have equal purposely parked this way, right? So the reason being, I'm asking bros and broettes, like when you guys meet up here at the Savannah Harley Davidson dealership, I ask if that when you guys come in the entrance way there, and I'll uh, head up there shortly so you guys can see it a little closer. Um, I ask that you guys, if you guys can park your bikes this type of style, that would be great. Just kind of back it in uh, here. So, if, I mean, if it can just start along here, as long as it's out of the street, I mean, that would be awesome. Now, of course, the store is not going to be open, but we need all of this area here. We need the center area when we start putting together the, um, um, oh, gosh, I just went <laughs> blank. When we start putting together the uh, stagger formation, all right? So when we start putting together the group. Now, you guys can just back your bikes in alongside of there. Or, you know, some of you can back your bikes in here, all right? So, like I said, you can just kind of back it in here where your headlight is facing forward, just as my headlight is facing forward, all right? So you can back them in here if you like, okay? Or you can back them in uh just as i did equal all right and you know as i said again as i said as i said earlier the reason for this is because that would be awesome if we had all of this open space to set up the proper uh stagger formation so if we can use the center space set up the stagger formation that will be awesome all right so for those who for those of you who have never been to the uh savannah harley davidson dealership I'm walking up to the entrance way here now. I'll show you how the entrance look because kickstands up bros and bro us at five in the morning. Now, what that means is that once kickstands up, man, we're going to leave out of here. I'm walking up to the front now. Man, y'all hear me breathing hard? My law. I just ate that uh, southern soul. But see this here? That's 95. That's 95 soft. Soft. <laughs> Get your googly eye, but no. Uh, so this is 95 South, right? So we are all going to exit from the uh, Savannah Harley Davidson dealership on to 95. So if you have to gas up bros and broettes, please gas up before you meet us here because kick stands up at five. All right. I along with some more other people. I'm sure it's probably going to be here way before five. My goal is to be here uh, at four, no later than 4.02. No. 
Well, my goal is to be here at four. All right, so let me show you this here. All right, so the reason I want to show you the entrance and exit area, uh, two reasons. One is we have a couple of gas stations, bros and broettes, which is literally across the street. All right, now, of course, this is a one way, so you'll have to go down, make a U turn if you so choose to, and head to that gas station there. Hang on, hang on, and boom. I don't know, what is that? Moto? A gas station or something? But it looks like there is a. Oh, that's a gas station next to that. Man, show you how much I get out. So there's the gas station literally right next door to each other, all right? And if anyone have an Indian bike that's traveling with us, the Indian dealership is literally right behind that gas station, guys. So you have the Waffle House, you have Moto Gas Station, and I believe that's Sonic or Cyanic or something like that, gas station right next door to each other, okay? So more than likely, some of you guys are gonna be getting off the highway of 95 right here. See how these cars are coming, getting off the uh, highway of the exit area onto traffic. So if you're on your bike, you're gonna get off 95, hang a right, gonna pass Waffle House. Once you pass Waffle House, you have the two gas stations there. Once you gas up, you'll go right between that crossway area where this car just turned onto the main street and boom, this here is the entrance exit area of Savannah Harley Davidson dealership, okay? So you guys ride straight down this way here. I don't know if you guys can see equal way down yonder on the left. You'll ride there, back your bike in on the left-hand side or where the old school truck is there on my right-hand side. All right, now, for those who's getting off, uh, I'm sorry, you guys will be getting off, yeah, that's 95 South. Now, for those who's gonna be getting off of 95 North, uh, 95 North exit is on the other side of this uh, overpass where these uh, vehicles are headed now. So once you get off there, there is a gas station immediately to your right. So once you gas up there, you of course make a left, you'll be in this uh, 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 road across from me, you'll cross over, come in, straight down. I know you guys probably saying like, man, what Junior, why you gotta break it down like that? Bros and bros, trust me, this literally helps. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know what I'm saying? If I'm a part of anything, man, I wanna make it convenient and I want it to be, you know, broken down in layman's terms so everybody can understand and pretty much go from there. So if you're coming from 95 North, you get off that uh, exit, you hang a right, gas station is right there on your right hand side you make a left you'll be on the road here you make that u-turn you'll come into here hey what's up bro <laughs> what's up man good? i'm good i'm just kind of showing everybody uh because we're planning a key west trip this week okay. so i'm just kind of letting everybody know like where to meet meet up to here make a left okay. and all that good stuff i just saw your bike sitting there and i saw you up here i'm like Man, you are, hey guys, this is the instructor right here. This is Sean. <laughs> hey, I increased my time too, man. I got it up to 24 seconds. Nice. Yeah, man, so I'm trying. All right, brother, like Thank your bike. You. Thank you. All right, man. I'm not sure if anyone will have a trailer. Uh, I didn't see any comments about that. Uh, from what I've noticed, I believe everyone will be um, uh, riding their motorcycles. So if you have a trailer, um, I would probably suggest more than likely you're you're going to have a hotel if you have a trailer. I would suggest leaving it um, at the hotel or calling Savannah Harley Davidson dealership, letting them know, hey, listen, I got a, a trip uh, that I'm going to be a part of uh, for the Key West trip. It's impossible. Can I leave my trailer there? All right, uh, because I didn't uh, I didn't even think of asking them about that. But if they say yes, more than likely they're going to have you to uh, more than likely park your truck and trailer here kind of out of the way of the main parking area because more than likely people like to park past this island back so this last island area here is more than likely where they would allow the trailer to be but like i said call the store and just get proper permission that would be awesome pretty much it bros and bro what so if you guys can back your bikes in here all right back in back in back in and just like sean have his bike just like that there 
So if you guys want to back in your bikes like that as well, then once uh, we get everybody properly set up, uh, Papa D is going to be leading the pack and then we'll build the stagger formation from there. All right. So once again, bros and bros, if you have to gas up, please gas up way before five. We are kickstands up at five on to 95 South headed to uh, Uly, Florida. Why do I want to keep saying Uly, Georgia? <laughs> but yes, kickstands up. We're going to hang a right. Then we're all going to hang another right. And, and we're off. All right, so another thing, bros and broads, and pretty much every content creator that's gonna be tagging along has talked about this, but comfort is a huge priority. This is, uh, you know what, matter of fact, put in the comment, uh, how, how many hours will it be for you round trip? All right, so with me, um, I think just from here to Key West along is 600, plus miles or something like that. So I think a round trip, that'd be a little over 1200 for me. So put in the comments below, I'm just kind of curious, what would be your total round trip mile that's from, uh, starting from your house, don't even start it from Savannah, start it from your house, especially, you know, if you're in uh, Texas, if you're coming from Texas, if you're coming from South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, if you're coming from Ohio, uh, if you're coming from Nevada, start it from there all the way to Key West and back, all right? So, yeah, what's, what's going to be your round uh, round total mileage for this trip? I think that would be awesome. These are some big boy miles, all right? So don't let anyone tell you guys, oh, well, that's pretty cool. No, bro, these are some big miles, man. I'm telling you, any, any anything, well... I'll just say this because, you know, everybody quotes big miles. Everybody defines big miles differently. So I would say anything over 800, five to 800 miles is considered big miles. Anything less than that, it's still a lot of miles. <laughs> All right, bros and bros. So with that being said, comfort is a must. So with me, anything that's three hours and more, I have a cushion that I put on top of my tall boy seat. Now this tall boy seat, I would recommend it to anybody, man. This seat is two huge thumbs up, like seriously. But after that three hours, trust me, man, I am a long distance rider. And after being on this seat, man, for hours and hours at a time, no matter to me, no matter what seat you have, I'm going to need a cushion. So I have that cushion because I know I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to feel pain, I'm going to be discomfort, and I want to be comfortable. So please make sure you guys are comfortable. Another thing, man, the like I said, the simplest things, highway pegs. Remember, your, your feet, your legs is going to be in this position for a long period of time. You have highway pegs, you're at least able to stretch them out, relax a little bit, etc. right? See, I even got some for uh, wifey. So yeah, man, so that comfort is a must rain gear as you guys can see i am rocking the rain gear and if you have proper rain gear man thank god i now have proper rain gear two huge thumbs up to papa d i have proper rain gear man and i can say it's comfortable so me riding in the rain i'm not uncomfortable as when i had my uh walmart rain gear <laughs> with that walmart rain gear man water was everywhere man oh like my guy Big Mike said, the only thing that didn't get wet was the rain suit. I mean, but we got drenched. So I had to get rid of that Walmart rain suit, man. So, uh, but yeah, proper rain gear will help, man. And it looked like, it looks like we actually may need the rain gear. Now I'll tell you, even uh, more than rain gear, rain boots. Uh, shame on me, bros and bros. My, uh, my Harley rain, not rain boots. Yeah, it's the Harley rain boot covers they're in my garage man so i'm going to make sure for this trip that i actually uh bring them as well because now my body for the most part is dry but my feet are drenched and i just i can't keep going through that i don't like that it's so uncomfortable maintenance on your bike bros and bro -ets. man look maintenance on your bike is important man i was actually going to um i was actually going to get my uh 30 000 mile service done after the key west trip once again my guy papa d uh watched uh the video where i was kind of going over some things on the bike 
He's like, Will Junior, man, I suggest, man, you probably want to go ahead and get that done now. So, man, I took him up on his advice and I decided to go ahead and get it done before the trip. And honestly, I couldn't be happier, man. Those new tires is like riding on a cloud. Oh my gosh. So beautiful, man. And then uh, all my fluids are changed. Uh, new spark plugs. It's almost like I just bought this bike again. Another reason we're asking everyone to show up early because if you guys have noticed in my past videos, every time I do any type of group riding, I've always asked if everyone can introduce themselves, man. I think that is so important. You know, there's nothing like knowing the person that's behind you in a stagger formation and knowing that person behind that person. Now, we're not saying, you know, get personal if you like walks in the beach, you like, you know, sand to tickle your feet. No, that's a negative. You know what I'm saying? But we at least like to know, you know, your name, you know, where are you from? And, you know, hey, uh, I don't know, what are you riding? Just something so we'll know, hey, that's just not a person to my right or to my left. That's Danny, that's Michael, that's Andy, that's Randy. You know what I'm saying? All right, bros and bro, it's another reason we're asking everyone to show up early is because we'll like to say a prayer before we actually start our journey. There's nothing like allowing God presence to go before us, man, on this trip and just protecting us, man, from the start of our destination to the end of our destination. So, yeah, we'll definitely like to, you know, give reverence to God, man, and just thank him for his many blessings and blessing everyone to make it safely and to make it to the destination safely. So definitely want to give reverence to God. So that's another reason we ask everyone to show up early so we can just, you know, uh, introduce ourselves to each other and, you know, say a prayer. And then kickstands up, we are rolling because, you know, people probably going to want to take pictures and, you know, for the content creators, they're going to be wanting to, hey, man, we got such a so in the building. You know what I'm saying? I know I am. So I got to get here early enough to have fun. I don't want to be pulling up at 459. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. No. <laughs> Y'all going to be like, what if he don't get his whole googly eye? So, yeah, man. I mean, that, that's going to be awesome, man. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, man, pertaining to any of this, please put it in the uh comments below bros and bros man we we just want everybody to come out and have a great time man that's that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell man uh i believe most of you guys have already done this already uh but i ask again uh simply because we're getting close to the actual due date if you're going to meet here in savannah georgia please place it in the comments below if you're going to meet uh tiffany and her husband in north carolina please place it in their comments below. If you're going to meet uh, Papa D. Raj coming from North Carolina, please place it in his comments below on his uh, uh, YouTube channel, Tiffany Renee and her husband YouTube channel. If you're going to be meeting with Kix and Harley uh, out uh, Columbus, Georgia, it's kind of funny, yeah. please, there we go. Please place it in his comments, go to his YouTube channel and place it there. And um, everyone's just gonna meet here in Savannah, all right? Uh, if you're gonna meet me here in Savannah, <laughs> uh, place it in the comments below. And two huge thumbs up. Uh, most of you guys have been placing your comments in the actual Key West video. Uh, the Key West video that I titled uh, Key West, yes, no, maybe. So I have been seeing a lot of uh, updated uh, comments there. So if you place it there, that's fine. There's no need to, well, there's no need to place it in this comment, but you know, Papa D uh, likes to get a count and I, I would like to get a count as well. So, you know, if you guys would pretty please place it in this comment as well, I think that will also help, man. So far, I normally, and I'll tell you what, bros and bros, this is rare. I have read very little comments of, anyone said that they have canceled the trip or now they can't come because of xyz so man looks like you guys are standing strong man <laughs> and that's a good thing please please guys we are all working together so we're going to be putting people in the assigned uh areas for the stagger formation and it's not to say well you gonna put me here and i want to ride there no man we're looking to all have fun but just please work with us because we're gonna to have to strategically set it up, uh, Papa D and myself, because you know, some people are not comfortable in riding in the far back. Some people are not comfortable riding in the actual front. Uh, as as uh, Papa D did an earlier video, more you're more I wouldn't say aggressive riders, but you're more professional uh, riders are normally in the front, and your uh, entry level riders are somewhat in the middle, and then you have your uh, tail gunner riders in the rear. Uh, I'll be in the rear uh, Just kind of making sure that you know, everybody 
is you know in line and not falling behind so whoever wants to be in the rear back there with me that is totally fine uh content creators if you're trying to video while we're riding that's totally fine also just you know we'll talk about a little more about that in person if you want to get like some riding shots some v-rolls etc uh montage however you want to do it you know what i'm saying that's totally cool of course just you know what i'm saying we'll just kind of plan that and work that out so you know you don't have three four people recording at the same time but uh i think it's going to be cool man look any questions you guys have please place it in the comments below we're gonna have fun man we're gonna have a great time to huge thumbs up all right bros and bros look man before i let you guys go man i have to give a huge two huge thumbs up man to my guy moody man look for those who follow the channel you guys know that uh moody was part of the iba 10 for the win what is the iba 10 for the win if you guys go back and look at my videos you guys will see that we had 10 motorcycles here uh back in february and uh some of the guys knew each other but most of the bikers didn't know each other and man we did a thousand miles in under 24 hours man and we rode tight formation man it was actually y'all y'all gotta check that video out man like seriously well the huge two the two huge thumbs up coming in is that my guy moody called me up and he was like guess what bro i was like what's up man he started the let me get it right he started the because they don't call um hang arounds so rare breed i believe rare breed don't call the people that's wanting to become a MC with them they don't call them prospects if i'm not mistaken i think they call them hangarounds please don't don't quote me on that but the point is, is what i'm saying is that my guy moody has now started the process to become a rare breed member wow man i think that's awesome man two huge thumbs up y'all already know man I, I love just hanging with those guys i love riding with those guys as you guys saw in the video earlier oh my god you know what i'm saying top flight was clowning me man but no it's all good man it's all in love man yeah i love riding with those guys man y'all know me man i ride with a motorcycle club in a minute if they say they about to get some miles in <laughs> hey babe can i ride with six so i'm about to roll nah you gotta do them dishes look woman no i'm just glad but yeah man hey i'm rolling i'm hitting the road man and man i love riding with them guys man uh y'all know rare breed man these guys are always highway riding man they always getting the miles and my guy moody has started the process he has his uh black vest so you know what i'm saying it's a matter of time before he get like his upper lower rocker etc also man i gotta give another two huge thumbs up to my guy chris man chris is now kings of the south i was trying to think of the acronym uh k-o-t-s kings of the south man two huge thumbs up to my guy chris man congratulations bro i mean man just man listen man people see positivity and they want to be a part of it why because they're positive you know what i'm saying rare breed is a positive motorcycle club trust me i like i i see it you know what i'm saying uh kings of the south those guys are a po positive motorcycle club why because my guy chris is a positive person man so two huge thumbs up to my guys man my guy chris two huge thumbs up to him man he's a fully he's a full patch member now and now my guy moody has started the process with rare breed man soon to be a full patch member so man it's just a blessing man now why am i announcing these things and asking you guys to give these guys two huge thumbs up this is the motorcycle content youtube channel you know what i'm saying and it's connected to positivity so listen man if you guys know anybody man that just uh joined the motorcycle club and you know what i'm saying it's, it's a positive atmosphere positive riders and they collect the miles man put it in the comments below i think that's to be celebrated man that's that's the blessing man you know because like i said most of these mcs are like uh military uh military background related so like these ain't no you know people that just man let's just go do something no these guys already have structure they're already grounded and they're already disciplined so man motorcycle club is just a bonus you know what i mean before i let you guys go bros and bros please do me another favor what should we call this key west trip please place it in the comments below what should we call this trip man i don't know uh uh kw zero <laughs> <laughs> man look please put it in the comments below man we gotta name this trip man when i did the uh 24 hours or the 1500 miles and then the 24 hours with my guy um uh uh uh, uh kicks and harley which is virgil and ken man we called that the three amigos when i did the iba with the 10 riders we called that iba 10 for the win man come on y'all what should we call this man please put it in the comments below we gotta call i said we gotta give ourselves a name <laughs> 
All right, looks like I got to go to that saddlebag. All right, y'all. No. <laughs>